section 11.10 is on page 799 talks about Taylor and McLaren it's really Taylor you gotta pay attention to McLaren is a special case of Taylor so Taylor said look assume the absolute value of x minus a is less than r which is r radius of convergence if you take f of x which is a function you could write it as c sub 0 plus c sub 1 into x minus a to the 1 c sub 2 x minus a to the 2 3 4 basically you could take a function in math and write it as a power series believe it or not the challenging part turns out to be the c sub n and that's always the challenge whether you are figuring out where this converge diverge or whether you want to come up with the series well if i take f and i throw an a in there if i put an a everywhere i see an x do we agree that this is a zero this is a zero this is a zero this is a zero wouldn't that be just c sub zero if i take a derivative a derivative of this derivative of a constant is zero it's no longer there derivative of this that's just c1 derivative of this bring the power down subtract one from the power derivative of this bring the power down subtract one from the power if i figure out what f prime of a is if i put x equal a wouldn't those all be zero except for that piece right there wouldn't that mean that f prime of a equals c sub 1 now if i take another derivative derivative of c sub 1 is a zero derivative of that term is right there here bring the power down three times two bring the power down four times three all the way down and if i take the second derivative evaluated at a wouldn't that be a zero and that be a zero i'm left with tc sub two almost there and if i take another derivative that's zero that's gone derivative of this is right there here you bring the power down subtract one from the power and so on and so forth and if i take the third derivative evaluated at a wouldn't all of those be zero I'm left with 2 times 3 c sub 3 so the third derivative at a is 2 times 3 c sub 3 now can I guess what the next derivative is if I take the fourth derivative evaluated at a what would that be that's the deal the fourth derivative evaluated at a now you could if you want say that's a zero plus that's two times three times four c sub four plus three times four times five times two c sub five x minus a to the one power and if i evaluate oh, that's not a that's x and if i evaluate this at a that would be 4 factorial c sub 4 pretty much that's 4 factorial so this is 3 factorial c sub 3 this is 2 factorial c sub 2 this is 1 factorial c sub 1 and this is 0 factorial c sub 0 so altogether if I want to find the nth derivative evaluated at a I'm guessing that would be n factorial c sub n. And remember, the hard part is figuring out what that c sub n is. And what do you think that is? c sub n would be the nth derivative at a divided by n factorial. All what I want to do right now is take this value and put it right there. And guess what I'll get? And if I let n equal 0, n equal 1, n equal 2, n equal 3, now I'm altering equa equa the first equation we have. f of x is actually f of a, 
because that was C sub 0 right there. C sub 1, F prime of A, C sub 2, F prime of but divided by 2 factorial, divided by 1 factorial, divided by 0 factorial. So basically, it turns out F of X is F of A, F prime of A, X minus A to the 1 over 1 factorial, X minus 2 times F double prime over 2 factorial, and so on and so forth. And that turns out to be the bulk of the section. So, they put it in an actual theorem. We just derived that form. Basically, this is what you want to pay attention to in this section. Taylor is the general case. If you want to find a general function centered at A, it's F of A plus F prime of A over 1 factorial times X minus 1, A to the 1, plus the second derivative divided by 2 factorial, X minus A to the second power. McLaren, all what McLaren did, he said, a equal to 0, f of 0, f prime of 0, there's no a, if a equals 0, that's just x to the 1, that's just x squared, that's just x cubed, and so on and so forth. So, basically, this is really what I'm getting out of this. If I take any function in math, I'm going to write that as the series n equals 0 to infinity of the nth derivative evaluated at a divided by n factorial times x minus a to the n. And if I want to use McLaren, all what I do is, I'll say around 0, I'm looking for the nth derivative evaluated at 0 over n factorial times x to the n. So the first problem right here, number 14, this is on page, let me get the page really quick, page 811 says, find me the McLaren series, meaning what? e to the negative 2x around 0 is going to be McLaren, just set x equal to 0, f of 0 plus f prime of 0, x to the 1 over 1 factorial, f double prime of 0, x squared over 2 factorial, triple prime of 0. Now, how many of those do you need? As many as figuring out the pattern. This is where arithmetic and geometric sequences come in very handy from your college algebra class. So the list goes on. Basically, this is what I have to find, the coefficient. The rest is fixed. So e to the negative 2x is an irrational number. I'm going to get that to be, well, I need this value, plus something times x to the 1 over 1 factorial, plus the number times x squared over 2 factorial, plus the number times x cubed over 3 factorial. This list continues. Well, on the side, I'm going to say, well, let's say f is e to the negative 2x. If I evaluate that at x equals 0, e to the 0 is 1. A derivative, isn't that negative 2 e to the negative 2x? At 0, that's negative 2. How about a second derivative? negative 2 times negative 2, that's negative 2 squared e to the negative 2x. Isn't that a negative 2 squared or 4? Third derivative, isn't that negative 2 cubed e to the negative 2x? So this is a 1. This is a negative 2. This is a negative 2 squared. This is a negative 2 cubed. Wouldn't that be a negative 2 to the 4th? So we're getting the pattern. 1 minus 2x to the 1 over 1 factorial minus <coughs> a plus 2 squared over 2 factorial x squared minus 2 cubed over 3 factorial x cubed plus 2 to the 4th over 4 factorial x to the 4th. The reason I'm not simplifying, I need a pattern. And that's the hard part. So that would be series n equal to infinity. I notice I tie everything to x. I notice the power on x is 1, 2, 3, 4. So that's n. 
even 2n odd n n plus 2n plus 1 or 2n minus 1 right that's the odd 2n plus 1 2n minus 1 if it's integers n 1 2 3 4 that's just n well i also notice whatever this is there is the same quantity factorial and there's a negative 2 in each of those each of those happen to contain a negative 2 and it's raised to the same power and it is ultra actually I should have taken the negative out of it because you want to show clearly that this is alternating and can I start at 0 so if you throw 0 in there would I get a 1 if that's the case that's fine if not I'll start at 1 and I have to compensate for that term so if I let n equals 0 0 factor it is 1 0 2 to this yep that'll work that's the power series. Find a power series. That's how we do it. Okay. Let's do another one. 16. It says find this. Well, this is what we're going to do. Taking a derivative of this is very annoying. What we're going to do, we're going to say let g of x equal the cosine of x. And that's going to be f of 0 plus f prime of 0 x to the 1 over 1 factorial plus double prime of 0 x squared over 2 factorial plus f triple prime of 0 x cubed over 3 factorial fourth at 0 x to the fourth over 4 factorial maybe two more so on the side I need to figure out f equal cosine of x at x equals 0 that's a 1. f prime is negative the sine of x. That's a 0. f double prime is negative the cosine of x. That's a negative 1. Triple prime is the sine of x. That's a 0. Fourth derivative, cosine of x. That's a 1. Fifth derivative, negative sine of x. That's a 0. Can you guess? 1, 0, negative 1, 0. 1. 0 x to the 1 over 1 factorial minus 1 x squared over 2 factorial plus 0 x cubed over 3 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial plus 0 x to the 5th over 4 factorial. Wouldn't the next one be negative x to the 5th over 5 factorial? So I notice here I have 1 minus x squared over 2 factorial plus x to the 4th over 4 factorial minus x to the 5th over x to the 6th. You guys, be careful. Look what you made me do. So, wouldn't that be the series n equal to infinity? This is alternating. Now, I'll see if this matches or not. The power, I tie everything to the power, 2, 4, 6. And isn't it whatever the power is, the denominator is factorial right now let me see if i let n equal zero uh, if i let n equal three would that work i'm looking at x to the six over two times three six factorial and negative one to the third is negative is this term matching yeah it is can i start at zero to get one and if i can't i'll just put one plus and start at one if that's the case that's coming up for now, yeah, if I let n equal 0, I will get a 1. There it is. This is what? This is the cosine. This is g of x. But that's not what we want. What we wanted was, we wanted x the cosine of x. So can't I say multiply this by x and that will do the trick? And what would that be? I'm just going to rewrite it right there. That would be the series n equals 0 to infinity, negative 1 to the n, times x to the 2n plus 1 over 2n factor. That's the actual answer. Alright, I'm going to stop this video here. I'll continue on the next video.